Pastos Biology, Biology 2115, Human Anatomy and Physiology 2. My email is jpasto at mgc.edu. My website is mgc.edu slash faculty slash jpasto. The other factor that affects cardiac output is stroke volume. Stroke volume refers to the volume of blood pumped per beat by each ventricle. What are the factors that affect stroke volume? While stroke volume is influenced by the force of contraction. If you increase the force of contraction, you increase the volume pumped per beat. Now that should be intuitive. If you put water in a syringe and you mash the plunger gently, you get a small flow out. But if you mash the plunger hard with greater force, you get a much greater flow out of the syringe. So we need to see what are those factors that influence force of contraction. Well, one is sympathetic input to the heart. As we saw with Starling's law, force of contraction is determined by ventricular stretch. So an increase in ventricular stretch increases force of contraction. Conversely, if ventricular stretch decreases, force of contraction decreases. What affects ventricular stretch? Well, ventricular stretch is directly influenced by end diastolic volume. As we'll see, if you increase end diastolic volume, you increase ventricular stretch and you increase force of contraction. Remember, end diastolic volume is the volume of blood in the ventricles at the end of diastole. Now remember, diastole is the state of relaxation of the ventricles. It occurs during the fifth through the eighth tenth of a second of the cardiac cycle, as well as the first tenth of a second of the next cycle. So this point is the end of diastole, and notice the volume is at its highest point. What causes an increase in end diastolic volume? One obvious cause would be an increase in the length of diastole. After all, the longer the heart rests, the more blood is able to flow into the heart. That would increase end diastolic volume. Another cause of end diastolic volume increase would be an increase in venous pressure. As I've said many times already, fluids flow from high to low in reference to a difference in pressure. If you increase venous pressure, naturally more blood flows into the heart and you increase end diastolic volume. So what are those factors that increase venous pressure? Well, one of them is the so-called respiratory pump. You've heard me refer to this before, or respiratory movements. You'll understand this when we get to the uh, respiratory system. Another one is what I call the skeletal muscle pump. That is an increase in skeletal muscle activity. As the skeletal muscles contract, they squeeze against the veins, raising the pressure in the veins, and because of the presence of one-way valves, the blood won't back up, but instead flows toward the heart. This is a very important reason for promoting blood flow into the heart. The third reason that the third cause of an increase in venous pressure is constriction of the veins. As you'll see a little later, uh, blood vessels are supplied by the sympathetic nervous system and almost entirely the sympathetic nervous system causes constriction of vessels. Even though the veins are thin-walled, they do have smooth muscle in their walls, they do constrict under the action of the sympathetic nervous system, and uh, 
that would lead to an increase in venous pressure. So, an increase in sympathetic input to the veins leads to constriction of veins, leads to a rise in venous pressure, and that promotes an increase in the end diastolic volume. There's one other factor, a rather important factor, that affects end diastolic volume, and this is end systolic volume. 